So does speed matter? Well, yeah, it does. But hello, my fellow archery nerds, and welcome to my backyard range where I just shot 80 arrows over the top of a chronograph to find out how much arrow weight, draw length, draw weight, tuning and fletching affect arrow speed. I found out a ton of really cool stuff that's gonna answer questions like, if you take a turn out of your limb bolts, how much are you gonna give up in terms of arrow speed? Or if you're moving up in arrow weight a little bit or a lot, what are you giving up there? And how much a difference does it make if you're shooting like a low profile forefletch, a high profile vein, or something in the middle? Or if you just wanna know how to make your arrows go faster, I got an answer for you too. I saved one final test for the end of this video where we're gonna find out if arrow speed actually matters in terms of arrow trajectory from 20 to 50 yards. So stay tuned for that. My first test was to see what effect Tune has on arrow speed, and all three arrows that I was using for this test shot a slight right tear, so it was a perfect opportunity to see what the difference was between that slight right tear and a perfect bolt hole. What I found out was that it's not that much. It's about a half a per second at point blank, and then shooting over the chronograph from 50 yards away was about a one foot per second difference. The big difference was the consistency of the arrow speed between the tuned bow, which had a 0.08 feet per second extreme spread versus the untuned bow, which had a two foot per second extreme spread. For this test, I had three different arrows that all shot a bullet hole through paper. Um, they're all fletched identically off the same jig, so just trying to eliminate any variables there. The lightest arrow of the bunch was this Easton Sonic 6.0, which weighs 440 grains. The midway arrow was this Easton 5.0, which weighs 445.8 grains. And the heavy arrow is a Easton Axis four millimeter long range, which weighs 475.6 grains. So we have about a six grain difference between the 5.0 and the Sonic, and then a 35 grain difference between the Sonic in the axis four millimeter. For the six grain jump in arrow weight, we saw a two foot per second loss in arrow weight for the 35 grain difference in arrow weight, there's a 10 foot per second difference in arrow speed. So based on these numbers, you can expect to lose about a foot per second for every three grains of arrow weight that you add. There's a bit of archery lore that a heavy arrow is going to carry its speed better because it has more momentum. So it's going to not lose as much speed going down range as a lighter arrow. I wanted to see if that's true. So what I did is I was 50 yards from the chronograph 60 yards from the target, so shooting over the top of this chronograph. And I shot the same setups three times each to get an average. The two arrows that were six grains apart, there's almost no difference in arrow speed, about half a foot per second. And the difference between those and the heavier arrow was 4.6 feet per second. So there's a little bit of truth there that that heavier arrow isn't losing as much speed like on a percentage basis compared to the lighter arrows. All right, so this next, next test is kind of an interesting one. My base test arrows are all fletched up with Tech Driver 275s, all off the same jig, all with the same helical. What I'm going to do is see how the speeds compare from those arrows to a blazer and a smaller low profile, but a four fletch, just to see if there's any speed difference at range. The low profile four fletch shot just a little bit faster but the real difference was in this high profile blazer vein, which shot 3.6 feet per second slower. That's pretty significant. Um, and I think you would notice that difference beyond 50 yards even more. And you can really hear the difference between the 275 tack driver and the blazer vein going down range. Uh, these make a lot more noise. So you can hear that drag happening as they're going down range. So all my testing up to this point was done with the bow in the middle limb position, which is about two and a half turns or five pounds off the max. Um, and that's because that's about the farthest I could take the bow without affecting the arrow tune. And what I did is I gave the bow one turn, shot it over the chronograph just to, to get an average, took it up another turn, shot it over. And then my last turn was about a half a turn and shot over the chronograph. So, those results, that first turn increased draw weight by 1.6 pounds, and I got a 3.7 foot per second increase in speed. The next turn increased draw weight 2.2 pounds and jumped up speed 5.2 feet per second. So that's 8.7 feet per second increase over the 3.8 pounds so far. 
And then that final half turn was one pound, which increased air weight three feet per second. In total, I increased draw weight by 4.9 pounds and got 11 and a half feet per second increased. So if you wanna put an average to that, you'll gain about two and a quarter feet per second for every pound of draw weight that you increase. The exception being that last turn of draw weight, which was one pound and we got three feet per second. Draw length is another uh, big one. So I wanted to see how much an inch of draw length makes a difference. I did this at two uh, positions on a rotating module. So at the end of the cam and then at the middle of the cam, one foot per second at the end of the cam uh, was 8.8 .8 feet per second difference. And in the middle of the mod was a 10.3 feet per second difference in one inch of draw length. So we're starting our trajectory mapping here at 20 yards. I have three dots for the three different arrow speeds I'm gonna be shooting. We're gonna shoot at 20 yards at the dots and then step back to 50 without moving our sight or changing our, our point of aim and shoot again. It will be able to measure how much drop these arrows have between 20 and 50. Now things are about to get really interesting. I cranked this bow up all the way to its max, so 60 pounds shooting the Easton 5.0s. Uh, the arrow speed that I'm getting is about 20 feet per second faster than the four millimeter axis at 55 pounds. We're gonna see how much these arrows are gonna drop between 20 and 50. I think it's gonna be a lot, um, like a big difference between these and the 264 foot per second arrows. I just finished shooting the last few arrows of this trajectory test. Just to remind you, we have one arrow going 264, one going 273, one going 283. And what we're doing is we're seeing how much these arrows are dropping between their 20 yard impact point and their 50 yard impact point. So let's measure and see what the difference is. Starting with the slow boy, we got 35 inches a drop between 20 and 50. The middle arrow here, uh, right about 30, just that maybe just a hair under. And then the fast one, about 26. So 35 inches of drop, 30 inches of drop, 26 inches of drop. Right there, about five inches of drop per 10 foot per second difference. That's pretty interesting. Uh, that's actually a lot more difference than I thought 10, for, 10 feet per second would make. We just launched all new shirt designs on the Outdoor Life merch store that are inspired by our vintage covers and we'll be coming out with a new design every month. In the shop, you'll also find stickers. My personal favorite is the Revenant hats and classic cover prints. If you want to check them out, click the link in the video description below. So does speed matter? Well, yes and no. We just saw that 10 feet per second means five inches less drop between 20 and 50, which is significant for sure uh, but i also shot the blazer and the sonic four fletch while i was down there at 50 yards to see how much drop they had if you remember the blazer was about three feet per second slower than the standard three fletch with the uh, tack driver 275s but it grouped right there with the tack driver uh, fletched four millimeter axis uh, maybe just a hair lower like half inch or so but right there with it, at least within the arrow of margin that I can shoot. Uh, then the four fletch Sonic 6.0 was about two foot per second faster than the Easton 5.0. That, that one also grouped right there with it. So that two to three foot per second doesn't seem to make a huge difference. It's when you kind of get over that hump into that 10 foot per second is where you're gonna start to notice it. Uh, so how do you gain more speed? There are two ways that I would look at doing it. Uh, you can't really change your draw length that much, so don't, don't even try it. Uh, but if you can, not right now, but you know, in the off season, give your bow a half turn, a turn every month while you're consistently shooting it to increase your draw weight by five pounds, that's gonna be really doable in the off season especially over the course of two or three months. Don't do it all at once. You're gonna regret that. But over the off season, no issues there. Or you can shave 30 grains off of your arrows. 
I mean, there are a ton of different aero shafts on the market that are lighter, like that 5.0 is a great one in terms of like a low grains per inch. So that would be another way to do it. Or you can do both and gain that 20 feet per second and have, you know, very little drop between 20 and 50. Before this experiment, these are the arrows that were in my quiver, the axis four millimeters, but this is what's in my quiver now. And that's really because of my 35 to 40 yard drop between these two arrows. With the four mils, I was getting three to four inches between 35 to 40. And with the 5.0s, now I'm getting two to three inches, which allows me to remove my 35 yard pin and just go 20, 30, 40. That's all for today. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. I know this was like a data heavy video, but I was really curious to see the results and I hope you were too. I'm Scott with Outdoor Life. We'll see you all in the next video.